Hello, it's Ruby, and today I'm going to be sharing another readathon with you. So I finished I Was a Rat by Philip Pullman, which was just a kind of like easy one to um, start the readathon with. It's one of Blakeney's favourite books that she liked when she was a child, so I um, got it out from the library. And it is really charming, like very easy reading, very comforting, like very nostalgic of the kinds of books I read a lot when I was younger. The thing I really loved about it is, so you have like little articles uh, from the Daily Scrouge, which is the newspaper in the city, like facsimiles of these articles being printed um, like within the text. They're just fun to read, but it's, it's also this really great insight for kids into how newspapers have an agenda and how there is no such thing as like an unbiased newspaper. They ask like, oh, do you think that this thing should be exterminated? And they've got the yes box, which is massive, and then like a tiny little no box. I don't know, I think it's, it's, it's obviously really important that kids are aware of that newspapers aren't just factual. So the next book is one I was already like 40 or 50 pages of the way through, which was Hoisman's Against Nature, which is a book originally published in French. I had been reading this for about a month, but I just kept on putting it down and then not picking it back up. Not even because I didn't really like it, it's just very dense, and so it's not the kind of thing you can just dip into for 10, 15 minutes. And at the same time, I was listening to some beautiful classical music, It's 10.30 and I've just finished Against Nature or Arabois by Hoismans, uh, which was published in the 1880s and was hugely influential for the decadent movement in England. Um, this was a French novel which was translated. It was one that I found and like heard about when I was doing research into the picture of Dorian Gray and so I decided to read it and I really enjoyed it. Like, some of it was very tedious. So the narrator lives alone and He's isolated himself completely from society because he doesn't like the direction that human nature is going and human society. He's like, no, I want to be separate from this. I want to reconnect with an old way of living and focus on enjoying the arts and kind of living for moments, living in moments and appreciating art and literature and music. But this lifestyle doesn't really work very well for him. And within this lifestyle too, there isn't really very much plot because there are no characters apart from him. Like he's the only named character and even he doesn't really have progression as it were. So it's kind of him, like it's like an Alamac and he like goes through artists and writers, poets that he likes and he analyzes them and provides these really beautiful descriptions of them and like his house and things. It's like very aesthetic. It's all about the aesthetic. So I've just had to switch cameras because the other one ran out. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm just gonna write up some thoughts on Notion because there is so much like scope for philosophical thought and reflection and I've made quite a few notes of things that I want to think more about in the book. So I'm probably just gonna spend like 20 minutes going through that.
Then I went downstairs and made myself some biscuit tea. Honestly, this tea is surprisingly good. I don't usually like English breakfast tea, but it's so malty and delicious and I definitely recommend you trying it. Always have to add milk though, of course. I went out into the courtyard to read because even though it was a little overcast and it did start raining, it was really quite humid and it is just always nice to be outside. And I was just reading some Fitzgerald short stories at the same time. So then Blakeney had made me this library card. Look, library of Blakeney for if I wanted to borrow any books on her shelves. These are her beautiful bookshelves. Honestly, they are stunning. And I chose three books to get out of Blakeney's library. Yay, library card works. How cool is that? I got out one of the Narnia books. I think it's called Sophie Missing and a bit of a stretch. And then after having some lunch, I headed into town specifically to Boston Tea Party because I love reading in cafes. I ordered myself some ginger rose and cardamom tea and just sat here for a couple of hours and read my book. into the library whilst I was in town because I love browsing libraries and the Exeter library does have a very good selection. Oh and on the way I was listening to an audiobook of Hamlet. I made myself some more tea when I got in. So I'm back now and I went to the library as you could see. So I picked up three books. Not sure if I'm going to read all three of them today. Obviously, I don't think I will. They're all very short. The first one is Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King, which I, I know it's such like a cult book and I know it's so influential and is highly critically acclaimed. So when I saw this, I thought I might as well read it and it is quite short so I could read it today for the readathon. The second one, I just, I just picked this up for the colour, I'm not going to lie. 
it's Sleep No More, Six Murderous Tales, and the cover is just so beautiful. So I might just dip into this and read like one or two of the stories, but this looks very good. And then finally, this one was on my TBR and it's so short, oh my gosh. Literally, I would buy this, but it's so short. But I love Max Porter. Uh, it's the death of Francis Bacon. And this plays with form in a really interesting way. I don't know much about it, but it kind of describes paintings and like you'll have pages where it just says like oil paint. 40 times 20 or something. I'll tell you what I think of this, but I am going to enjoy my tea and go and read some more of Hamlet, which I was listening to as an audiobook. So I finished reading Hamlet on the Kindle application on my laptop. It's really great because you can highlight and make comments as you're reading and for Shakespeare I find this really helpful. Um, I know that it's the kind of thing I'm likely to want to come back to and I want to have notes on it and this is a great way to keep all of your notes in one place and make sure that they correspond with the text itself as well. So I got up to act three and then we went down for dinner and Blakeney and I sat on the sofa for a little bit too. I took a break from Hamlet to read The Death of Francis Bacon and I found this very confusing. I ended up reading half of it and then going back and rereading the whole of the first half of the book because I found it so confusing and it made a lot more sense the second time round, I must say. So I finished The Death of Francis Bacon, which I've got to say, not the best thing I've read. I really like, um, I really like Max Porter. I read Lanny and loved it. It's one of the best books I've read in 2021. He writes in prose, but he's so selective that it is like reading poetry. Like there are fragments of sentences and he takes out words that he doesn't need. So like it does read like poetry and he does play with like the way that they look on the page as well. Death of Francis Bacon, I had very high hopes for and I mean, it didn't help that I didn't know who Francis Bacon was at first. I thought it was the guy from the 19th century, but it's the painter from the 90s who died in Madrid. He was in Spain, didn't speak the language and was lying on his deathbed for six days where there was no one to kind of give a testimony to or anything. Porter recreates his stream of consciousness from those last um, six days and gives some insight into what he was thinking, like tapping into his old childhood memories and stringing things together. And it's it, like, there are some wonderful moments in that, like so heartfelt kind of moments from childhood, then mixing with like being a young, young adult and then with the present day. It's, it's a really powerful testimony, but it's, it was just very confusing. So I've now started Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King. I've just read the first 25 pages and um, I'm actually gonna finish Hamlet now instead though, because it's really good, but I want to finish Hamlet. So then in the evening, I just finished off reading Hamlet on my laptop and that brought me to the end of my day of reading. Okay, it's the next day and I thought I would do a little bit of a roundup and reflection of the books I read. I'm so glad that I had that day yesterday because if I'm honest I have been in a bit of a reading slump for the last like six weeks which is really unfortunate because I'm now on summer holidays so I do have the time and the space to be reading more but I just haven't been. So I'm really glad that I got on top of my reading because now I'm feeling I feel like sometimes you need to do a lot of reading which reminds you of why you like to read so much and then you get back into the habit of reading very regularly so Doing a readathon, I think, is a really great way to like up your motivation to read. What did I read? The first book I read was I Was a Rat by Philip Pullman. It paled in comparison to the other books I read, but I'm glad I read it. Oh yeah, and then I finished Arabois uh, Against Nature by Hoisman. Next, I read three short stories by Fitzgerald. So I read Mayday, The Cut Glass Bowl, and The Diamond Is Big as the Ritz, and I loved all three of these so much. I read two of them when I was in the cafe and so I didn't actually speak, I haven't actually spoken to you about any of these next few books. These short stories did not disappoint. I have only read, I can't even think of what, which of his short stories I've read. I'm pretty sure I've read one of his short stories but I can't even remember which one it was. And I don't know why I haven't read more Fitzgerald. Now I feel like I'm gonna be on Fitzgerald's free now because I just wanna read like everything he's written. I love the opulence of his writing style which fits with the intense wealth that he often describes and in the diamond as big as the ritz in particular that was my favorite of the three that i read you have this sordid hugely uncomfortable display of wealth like it's extreme it's unbelievable it's disgusting how much wealth this family has at first you're sucked into like the beauty and the wonder of it and you're like wow this is incredible but then slowly but surely you realize how corrupt the whole system is i really love the 
style of this. It's like slightly different to the other two in that it's written more like a fairy tale. The other two are more realist. There's kind of like a weird dreamy stupor to the whole narrative of the diamond as big as, big as the Ritz. Wait, so I'm gonna prop you up because my hand's hurting. So just to give you an overview of what this is about, boy John who goes to stay with his friend Percy for the summer and his friend has boasted to him saying my father is the richest man in the world and he says that he, his father owns a diamond as big as the Ritz and John's a bit like oh no I don't believe you. He then visits Percy for the summer and he sees that it is in fact true and there is this massive diamond which is concealed within a mountain. And this is like an uncharted area of America. Nobody knows that this wealth exists um, but they live in the highest levels of luxury, like more luxurious even than Gatsby. But the whole description, like the description of the chateau and the description of like all of the jewels and like um, expensive fabrics and things, it's like dreamlike and it doesn't seem real. That they're more like apparitions than actual things. I guess kind of taps into that idea of like wealth being transient. Yeah, I don't want to give anything away, but it's wonderful. And like I also just read a few book, a few poems from this, the French poetry anthology from Every Man's Library Pocket Poets. I didn't read this front to back or anything, I just kind of like opened it random and read a few poems, but I did enjoy some of the ones I read. I think there's always an issue reading poems in translation because it's not gonna sound the same as it does in the original language. So like some of them aren't gonna be translated as well. So I didn't enjoy all of the poems I read, but I did find a few really lovely ones. And then I read Hamlet by Shakespeare, which did take me quite a long time to read. Obviously it's not very long, it's a play, but it's Shakespeare and I wanted to take notes and like really appreciate it as I was reading it. And I was actually really, uh, it's the first Shakespeare play I've read since I did my theatricals module last term, which was basically a kind of like early modern theater module. And I was so surprised at how much easier I found it to read Shakespeare this time. Like. Usually I do kind of struggle to read it. I've, I've enjoyed reading Shakespeare for quite a while now, but I definitely found it hard to to kind of understand, and it did take me a it did take me a long time to kind of unpick it. Whereas this time I um, was like surprised at how much easier I found it, which is really cool. But I really really enjoyed Hamlet. I can't believe it's taken me this long to read it. Like. Blakeney studied at A level, so she's always talking about it. And Ophelia as a character, oh my goodness, that image of her, like, I really want to see it on stage now. Like, the image of her dressed up in flowers coming on stage and seeing, like, her um, eloping into madness as Hamlet is supposed to be mad but isn't. Like, I know that in the Jacobean era, there was, um, shockingly, th this is kind of the time of the first asylums, and people from the public would come into asylums to watch mentally ill people and like pay tickets it was like a show and one of the things which uh, was really common in these like asylum visits was for patients to dress up like Ophelia because there was this romanticization of madness which very much came from Hamlet and sorry I'm gonna uh, there are spoilers because I feel like people are usually quite familiar with the play but even at the end with her like drowning there's this like beauty to her death she drowns in a stream and right next to the theatre you've got like the muddy dirty Thames which is all smelly with sewage and then you've got Ophelia drowning among flowers and willows in this beautiful little stream. So even though kind of this is, an in this is highly tragic it is romantic at the same time um, and so you don't actually have re any real reckoning with um, the hardships of madness it's just this kind of like trope. Um, it's really interesting to read. I think constructions of madness throughout history are fascinating, especially in the Jacobean era where it really started to be um, seen by the public for the first time because it was being presented on stage and people like the public could go and visit asylums. And then finally, I didn't finish this, but I read the first 25 pages of Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King and I am really liking it so far. It's very fast paced and not the kind of thing I'd usually read, but I'm glad that I'm reading it like I'm enjoying this more than I thought I would. So, oh wait, it's not called Shanksha Redemption, it's called Rita Hayworth and Shanksha Redemption. I didn't realise that, I just thought it was the format. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you have a productive week. Bye.